Ah, that is cool. Hey, does paying higher salaries mean greater motivation? Will buying a table tennis make your staff happier? Are millennials changing the workplace? Well, we thought we'd have a stab at sorting out workplace myths from facts. And Ian McRae is Director of High Potential Psychology and a familiar face and joins us. Good to see you again, Ian. Um, you're, you're here to debunk, right, some of these myths. Yep. You're going to tell me that millennials aren't changing our workplace? Well, I think the workplace has been changing for quite a while. It's okay. not necessarily millennials that have been doing it. Um, because when you look at all the research, millennials aren't very different as a group compared to older workers. So there's as much variation within any group as between them. So sometimes millennials get a bad rap for saying they're social media obsessed narcissists, right? But there's mm. also 72 year old people you've talked about on the show today that could fit that description as well. So it's not necessarily an age thing. So this whole, like, you know, well, it's been around for some time, but the whole Google Office kind of that sort of setup. Yeah. I thought that was driven by young, techie, and that was their environment that they thrived in. Well, that was kind of a trend that I think is dying out a bit now. Yeah. But really having a ball pit or a slide or a playground in the office <laughs> isn't really going to make much of a difference for productivity. So hopefully people are learning that now, that there's more effective ways to make people productive. Yeah, you've got a whole list here of the... So let's uh, go through some of them quickly. Our staff should work eight hours. What, eight hour days Monday to Friday? Well, now I know that's rubbish. The Swedes have picked up on that, right? Yeah. yeah, and most big companies now are too. That's one of the things tech companies have done really well is making offices more flexible. Mm. So making work fit people's schedules more, that flexibility. Because people should work when they're most productive, when they want to work most, instead of forcing people to be there at a certain time. You mentioned uh, millennials and, and social media. Social yep. media should not be allowed in the office places. Well, most workplaces now need social media. Yeah. Like if you're a marketing company, if you're a recruiter, you need social media. The other research has found that when you ban social media, 80% of people use it anyway. So the better way to approach it is to have some guidelines, have some specific types of social media, types of procedures that people can use in the office. Let's talk about the big one, the, one, the, the motivating people. I mean, yeah, you could be you could be highly motivated if you if they pay you more, can you? Or a bit more motivated? I mean, you could be. It sounds like you really could be. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what the BBC pays. I don't. <laughs> but money has more of a power to demotivate people or to make them grumpy at work. Oh, okay. So if people don't think they're getting paid enough or know they're not getting paid hmm. enough, if people have trouble with rent and bills and paying that, then they're going to be demotivated. If people aren't making as much as their colleagues, then that's going to make them less happy at work too. But beyond a certain level, money doesn't have a huge influence on how happy people are at work. What about relationships at work? Well, that's, that's, no, that's a big no-no. That's the tough one. I mean, they happen anyway. They do happen. No, Most people right, right, yeah. meet people through workplaces. Mm. So that's an interesting one that's been in the news a lot lately because it's really important to define the barrier between kind of appropriate relationships and harassment or aggression or bullying in the workplace. Um, so the reality is it's good to have policies about those and to make have these kind of, um, kind of clear-cut guidelines, what's appropriate. I mean, like obviously teachers, doctors, nurses, you can't have a relationship with a patient or a student. Well, no, no, no. you got about uh, <laughs> 10 seconds. Computers are going to take out jobs? About half of the people, maybe. About half of the people. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Ian, good to see you again. You, you yeah. know the ropes. You and I are now going to go to Wall Street to see how the markets are kicking off for the beginning of the week. And as expected, they're following what we've seen in Asia and Europe. And those, those China trade numbers are just really disappointing for, uh, for many around the globe. It's a global story. Remember that. Hey, follow me on Twitter. You can get me at BBC Hour. And I'm back same time, same place tomorrow. Yalder is back. She finally came back from holiday. She's back at the top of the hour. I'll see you soon. Thanks, Ian. Thank <laughs> you.